What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T. Claus. My name is Tevi, and this is a channel dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information, stay for the fun clips. Now, with that said, there will not be a fun clip today. Uh, again, I thought it would be a little bit more important to come in uh, and talk about what we saw today, right? I'm sure many of you, if you checked your account this morning, saw that you were massively, massively in the red, right? Um, and so we're going to talk about that today. Uh, and the purpose of today's video, again, I'm not going to rehash uh, what we talked about on Sunday. Um, you can go and watch the clip here. I'll link it and talk through that. This is going to be further expanding on the why behind uh, the crash and how low um, we went today. All right. So if you're in the, if you own Tesla, if you own Neo, if you own Virgin Galactic, if you own any of the high growth stock, high growth stocks. Um, you saw a massive hit today. So we'll talk through that. I'll tell you exactly what I did and why I did it. And then we'll go um, through what happens next. Um, so um, just to be clear, and I'm just going to be using my notes here. So if I'm looking away from the camera, that's exactly why, because I didn't have a ton of time to prepare for this. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, I'm just some guy on YouTube uh, who's sharing his educated opinion based on the information that's out there to help you, um, again, provide another data point as you're researching and trying to figure out how you structure your portfolio and how you move forward. So now that that's out of the way, let's get into the video. All right, so let's start with Neo and Tesla, right? We'll just focus here. And again, that's going to apply to the broader market, especially if you're in the high growth sector. Um, but again, if you woke up this morning and you own Neo and Tesla, you notice that we were, again, massively on the low side. And why this is important and why this is a little bit different than a simple pullback is for the last week or so, we've been on a steady decline for both of those stocks, right? They're high growth stocks and they've been on a decline. Uh, Neo specifically has gone past the 20% uh, decline, meaning that every time you're at 20% or above, that counts as a stock correction, right? So that's no longer a pullback, that's a correction, which is a little bit more severe. Tesla on the other end got hit the hardest where it went, uh, if you look at where it was a few weeks ago compared to now, we're down by 30%. At 30%, you're now officially past the correction point and that's uh, officially entering a bear market. Uh, well, is that bad? Well, we'll answer that in a second here. But why did we see um, this pullback? Well, essentially, on in addition to all the reasons that I've already mentioned in the last video, again, if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. I'll link it uh, in the description here. On Sunday evening, we found out that the Treasury bond yields uh, actually are on the rise. And why does that matter? Well, that's a measure that um, analysts and economists um, and fund managers use as an indication of how the economy is doing. Is it recovering? Is it not? Well, since last year, the bond yield rates have been super low, which is why a lot of the money has flowed into the equity market and why people are investing in stocks, because you're getting much higher returns. Now, with the news that uh, the Treasury notes are improving and the rates on, the, on those are improving, it means that the economy is recovering a lot faster than we expected. Well, why, is, why does that matter? It's because the concern is the Feds, uh, which is a central bank, have been saying that they're gonna keep the rates at near zero as long as inflation, inflation is low uh, and that we haven't fully recovered yet. With this latest news on the treasury bond yields increasing, well, that sparked a lot of fear in uh, many, you know, large institutions, right? From the standpoint that, you know, is the Fed going to come out and we're gonna raise um, borrowing rates now. And, and if they have borrowed money already, the interest rate on that is going to be much higher. Um, another reason why it's important, uh, like the economy recovering is important is because if it is, it means that businesses are reopening, right? So things like cyclicals, like your airlines, your banks, uh, all of those stocks that up until now have been beaten down, uh, that really nobody, not too many people have put money into, um, are now going to start recovering and they're going to go back up. So it makes sense for large institutions to rebalance their books, right? And to allocate more money towards those stocks and less towards high growth stocks. And now if bonds, which up until now were, you know, pretty much junk, to be honest, well, 
it offers an it offers a new option for investors. They can now shift that money towards some of the, the, the treasury bonds. They can put some money towards cyclicals and they can rotate into those other segments who are now expected to come up. The interesting thing here is that uh, Jerome Powell for several months now has been saying before we raise rates, right, we will give everybody ample time to prepare. It's not going to be all of a sudden you're going to wake up and there it is. The rates are going to be higher. But the problem with that is people cannot stop themselves from, you know, dealing or giving into FUD. FUD stands for fear, uncertainty and doubt. And so to try to position themselves. So this is, you know, large institutions and retail investors all over the place to try to position themselves ahead of uh, any kind of negative news that uh, Mr. Powell could have delivered today during his address, maybe confirming that they were going to raise rates. Uh, they further rebalanced and took profit. So took money out of the market just in case um, he would come on and say, yep, rates are going up and you are right. Seeing the treasury bond yields going up is a good indication that the market, uh, that the economy is recovering a lot faster than we expected. And therefore, you no longer need all of the uh, aid that we're providing. So that's why when you woke up this morning, um, well, first of all, on Monday, when you came into the week, it already dropped drastically. And now coming into Tuesday, right before the address, uh, you saw that massive drop. I mean, it was gut wrenching. You know, I expected that to happen, to be honest, but it was still tough to see your account or my particular account uh, in that much red, right? I was down over 20% just this morning. So pretty insane. It hurt. Uh, but again, understanding the rules around uh, why the market moves the way it does helps you not give in to FUD and helps you prepare for how to rebalance and how to prep yourself and adjust so that you can come out on top uh, irregardless. So to answer the question earlier of, you know, is it bad that Tesla is in, uh, was in the bear market and that NEO has uh, entered full correction? The answer is yes, it's bad, but that's only short term, right? We have to think about you know, you can't be focused on just the next week, the next month. You want to think about where we're going in the next year, next two years, next five years and beyond. And that's really where your mind needs to be at in order for you to succeed in this game. And so when we think about where we're going in the long term, nothing has changed at Tesla, right? They were they're still going to be opening factories, you know, come summertime. They're still launching their new models as Plaid. They're still going to have their $25,000 Tesla come, you know, next year or as early as next year. And when we talk about NEO, they're still going to announce probably more than likely some pretty amazing numbers uh, a week from now when they have their earning call. And they're still prepping to launch into Europe come summertime. So all that stuff is still happening. Nothing has changed, right? This is very short term. This is people repositioning themselves to try to, um, benefit from the short term, especially for rotating into, you know, cyclicals, they want to, you know, a piece of that pie. And if we don't, then, you know, they took money off the table and they're ready to redeploy it when the market um, crashed the way it did. So large institutions are going to be just fine. You know, what you need to worry about is yourself and how you're positioning yourself and not again, giving into fear and selling out of the positions when you're down, because remember that you're not, you haven't lost money until you actually sell. Once you sell those losses that you're seeing on your, on your phone moving around, that's when it really counts, right? So let's get specifically into what I did this morning, right? So let's get into that. So Mr. Powell's address was this morning. And when he came on, he stated pretty much exactly what I expected him to do, uh, which has been the same speech, the same points that he's been making for the last six months or more, which has been, we, the feds, are here to support you in every way that we can in order to ensure that the economy recovers as quickly as it can, right? And if we are going to raise rates because the economy and inflation is going up quicker than expected, then we will let you know with ample notice. So what did I do? Well, it's very simple. I pretty much figured that, again, this is what happens every single time, literally every single time. It was just a lot more severe this time around. Right before the address, you'll see that stock prices will plummet. They'll drop. And then after uh, Mr. Powell comes on and speaks, everything goes back up, right? So when that happened, right before you know we were going down and then it literally just dropped super sharply, 
when that happened, I we pretty much hit rock bottom. And that's when I went in and I bought some NEO and I bought some Tesla. And I'll show you those transactions here. I'll put them on, on the screen. But I bought at pretty much near the bottom. And after that, I just kind of sat back and listened to the address. And he delivered exactly what we expect him to deliver. And we saw that bounce back. I mean, it was a pretty sharp bounce and it went right back up to the point where the NASDAQ and Dow fully recovered, those two indices fully recovered uh, and ended up in the green. With NEO and Tesla in that 20 to 30% um, range down from their highest point, it's a massive discount. It's a massive discount. And I'm not telling you that you should do the same. This is what I did and why I did it. Uh, again, the goal is to advance my high conviction plays because those are the ones that I have a clear picture on where they're going in the next five years, 10 years. And there's no doubt in my mind that uh, both NEO and Tesla are going to at least double by the end of the year. The moral of the story here, and what I really want you to take away from this, is that you don't want to give in to FUD. And again, FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You want to understand the forces that are moving the market. And if you do, then you can plan, strategize, and rebalance accordingly so that at the end of the day, when your high conviction stocks are bouncing back, you can win in the long run. And so, in the short term, when we see these type of corrections, um, the, the whole point behind these is to ensure that the market stays healthy, right? We don't want to keep going up, up, up so fast because then things just get out of control uh, and that's not good either. This is normal. And as crazy and brutal as it was to see, again, your portfolio down, or I should say to see my portfolio down by this much, go back three months, right? Go back three months pick any, you know, pick Tesla or Neo and see where the price was versus where it is today. So even though we dropped by 20% and 30%, it's still ahead of where it was three months ago. And that's really what matters, right? If you're in this for the long run, these day-to-day -day price movements or, you know, one week, two weeks of a slump of a downtrend, um, the occasional corrections, um, the often pullback, they don't matter. They only matter from the standpoint that this is your chance to either add to your position or hold your ground. As long as your conviction in the stock hasn't changed and the fundamentals of the business haven't changed, you want to hold your, your ground or add to your position and average down. So what happens next? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, in the next week or two here, uh, maybe a little longer, give or take a few weeks, we're going to recover. Uh, we're going to fully recover. We already saw the bounce this morning from the address and the confirmation that rates weren't being raised, we saw pretty much everything in the tech sector bounce back. Tesla and uh, Tesla ended up in the green for the day. Neo is pretty close to it. I expect that again, we will see green in the next week or so here, especially once we hear how they did with their earning call. And if you did not panic sell, well, congratulations. You made it through your very first market crash, full on market correction. Um, and this is only going to make you a stronger investor. And the next time that you see something like this and that you're able to look for the right information, which is what's driving the market, is this part of the regular rebalancing effort? Is this more because we're waiting on the address from Mr. Powell? What, what's driving it? Look for the why behind um, the, the downturn that we're seeing. Once you understand that, you'll be a much better investor and you'll be much better off. Um, and again, uh, it's not easy to see a 20% or 30% drop in your portfolio. But once you've seen it once, uh, you're pretty much immune to it. So I hope that this helps you with the, why we saw the sharp drop this morning, the crash overall, and where things are going next, right? So if you have any more questions about you know something I covered, I know I went through some of this stuff fairly quickly. Um, and again, it was probably wasn't as polished as it could have been. Uh, but if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll get to each and every one of them. Uh, the one thing that I will say, again, as a reminder, this is my non-licensed opinion, right? I'm just, again, some guy on YouTube, uh, not a financial advisor by any means, but I will share what I know um, uh, to be facts. And you can use that as uh, a data point, again, in your own research and um, as you're preparing for what you're going to be doing next in your own portfolio. 
as always thank you for watching if you found what i had to say insightful and it helped you out in any kind of way drop me a like share with your friends i think the more people understand what's going on and the why behind it the better decisions they will make and remember don't give in to fud um stay humble hustle hard and i'll see you back here on sunday